Welcome to a demonstration of the Ruckus IoT Suite. Today I'm going to show you the global enablement of IoT servers on the Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone, the admin approval of an IoT, the Ruckus IoT module, um, the onboarding of a, an IoT endpoint. We'll also show you the rule creation um, of local rules using the IBM Watson platform. So to walk through the steps, what you see here is the interface of the Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone. To enable IoT servers at a global level, go to Systems, AP Settings, and the release of the Smart Zone that supports um, IoT enablement has a tab called IoT Service. Click on I Enable IoT Service, and then you'd have to provide a few parameters for you to uh, successfully enable the service, which is uh, the IP address of the Ruckus IoT controller, the port number, the VLAN that you want your IoT network on, then click OK. Once we've done this, IoT service is enabled in this controller, and you'd be able to see the IoT status of the access points, either at an individual access point level or at a group level. Then as you move to the access point, what you then see when you uh, look at the access point uh, details um, is a new column that represents the IoT status. You can either click on the zone to view IoT status at a, at a group level, or you can click on individual access point to see the uh, IoT enablement um, status. So what you see here um, are parameters that uh, indicate what the enablement is. You have discovery status, which, uh, which tells you whether a, a USB module has been added on or not, admin enablement, operational status, and the ability to uh, edit all of these. The other point is that the, the IoT module can be booted up as a Zigbee or a BLE module, and so the, the protocol status is also indicated on the screen. Following on, I'm going to add a USB module to the access point that's highlighted on screen here, Rakas AP BLE2. Currently, it does not have a USB plug-on, and the status is reflected so. So I'm going to add a USB module here, and you will see the status of the USB detected, uh, the discovery status of this uh, access point change as the information is transmitted to the controller. This happens through uh, an auto discovery process whereby when the USB module is detected by the access point, it transmits that information to the controller. What you see here is that the IoT module has been detected um, at the USB interface by the access point and that information has been transmitted to the virtual smart zone. It shows up as down by admin because I have not admin approved it yet. To do that, I'm going to click on edit in the IoT tab below check the Enable IoT Services box, click OK. You just saw the admin status change from um, not being approved to enable. And, and this effectively onboards the IoT module to the Ruckus access point. Upon the successful completion of the admin approval of the Ruckus IoT module um, onto the access point and controller, the IoT status now reflects as on and uh, you see that the USB status is detected, admins enabled, and the operational status is on. This completes the uh, admin approval process to onboard the Ruckus IoT module to the Ruckus access point. The second interface that's associated with the Ruckus IoT suite um, is the, the interface of the Ruckus IoT controller. Um, this interface uh, represents the relationship between the IoT enabled Ruckus access points and uh, the IoT endpoints. So what I'm going to show you here is the uh, onboarding of a Zigbee connected lock, uh, a Zigbee connected light on the Ruckus IoT controller. So you, ha you see a couple of Zigbee locks onboarded already to this, uh, uh, into this system. I'll, I'll show you the onboarding of yet another device. In order to onboard uh, the Zigbee light, we need to get the, the relevant Ruckus access point 
into a scan mode. And, and we can do that by selecting the appropriate access point and clicking on the scan window button. That puts the ruckus access point into a, the ruckus IoT uh, uh, access point into a, scan win, into a scanning mode and enables us to scan for uh, IoT devices around that are ZigBee connected. The onboarding of the OSRAM light, I've put the light into discovery mode by turning it off and turning it on five times, um, enabling the scan on the, uh, on the Ruckus IoT uh, access point, and, and uh, doing that has enabled me to uh, uh, discover the OSRAM light during the scan. I've added a descriptor and I've added tags to make sure that I can filter for this device uh, when I slice and dice um, uh, for data on the controller interface. And then I can click on add to add the device. Once the light has been onboarded successfully to the controller, you can now enable, you can now access uh, this light from this panel and you can enable changes to the device operation. For example, you can turn off the light or dim the brightness or change the color of this uh, uh, multicolor light. The modular architecture of the Ruckus IoT controller also enables us to integrate third-party rules engine such as the IBM Watson IoT platform. What you see here is the IBM Watson interface, uh, the Bluemix interface, whereby we've written three simple rules. Uh, the first one enables us to get a notification when a door lock has been locked. The second rule enables us to turn the light off when the door is locked. So you're able to write these rules across these different services. And the third rule is the opposite use case. When the door is unlocked, the light is, uh, the action uh, triggered is the light uh, turning on. Once these rules are set in the IBM interface, we can now go back to the Ruckus IoT controller interface and uh, see these rules execute. So the lock is locked right now. The Yale lock is locked right now. I'm hitting the trigger to unlock the lock. And what we're seeing now is as the lock unlocks, that event triggers a rule and the light turns on.